I thought about this a long time before I came up with my block because uh -huh. how do you choose a favorite? Right. There's so many. There's, there's so many. And I'm like, I don't know if I have a favorite favorite. So I came up with a block that reminded me of some things I've been doing in the last year. And the first one is with the club. Okay. And the second thing was with, we have the club and we have tug. And I was involved with the blocks there a lot. And so I right. fused them together and uh -huh. came up with, Oh my gosh. A disappearing pinwheel. And we did this as a swap in the club last year, but we also did the friendship block as a as, as the tug block. And so we were able to take the disappearing pinwheel, which has so many options that you can change it up. And uh -huh. we changed it to look like the friendship block. And so, uh, so cute. if you did that swap with us. The instructions are real similar. The sizes are just a little bit different. And we have this. And so I just used the two colors. I thought about changing it up a little bit more, but I was like, nah, we're just going right. to keep it the two. And so we have our little pinwheel mm -hmm. and then um, all of the points and all of the blocks. So it's pretty easy to do. And I stepped it out because I was kind of thinking, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to have a sewing machine. Uh -huh. So your first step is you will cut two eight inch blocks and you just sew around them so let's see here we go you can just see all the way it. around yeah this block is not eight inches this is like putting it in your rear view mirror it's smaller than it appears okay <laughs> so, right so once you get that done you're uh -huh. just going to cut across the diagonals so like this where you'll end up with the four pieces okay so the four different pieces okay and then you iron them and if i just kept thinking iron to the dark side iron everything to the dark right. side that was an important thing press to the and dark then, side yep iron to the dark side because then all of your stuff all of your seams just end up being perfect to line up you don't have to think about anything else with that so mm -hmm. you iron them to the dark side and then you're going to sew them together in a pin row. Okay. So this pinwheel ends up being nine and a half inches, but we're going to use an eight and a half inch block. Right. right. So here's our pinwheel. So you're going to trim it down? Yep. And one of my things I'm going to talk about first, this has best press in it. And you will want to use best press or some kind of starch when you do this because you're cutting on so many biases. Right. That it really helps your block to square. So, so use best press or use some kind of starch. That is my okay. very, very helpful tip. Okay, so now I have my cutting mat down here. Just gonna see if we can do that. You have a rotating pink cutting mat. I really need one of those, to be honest. Oh, you do. Okay, so here we have this. And um, we're going to cut, so it's nine and a half inches, and we're gonna cut it in thirds. So to do that, you think nine is easy to cut in thirds, but nine and a half gets a little bit trickier. And so with your rotating mat, we're just going to do the three inches and then an eighth. But when I lay my eighth down, I'm just going to make sure it's on like right on the fabric so that it's kind of taking up that little bit of extra to do the cutting. So hey, Sherry. Yep. We're having a request that you speak up a little bit. All right. Let me see if I can get closer to this, too. And maybe it's the quilting in my background. I don't know. I'm going to mute myself for a second. Maybe that will help. Okay. That sounds good. We'll, we'll, I'll talk a little bit louder. I feel like I have an audience here today, so but we'll do that. Um, so we have this, and we are going to cut it at three and an eighth. But make sure that that eighth inch is right on the edge of your fabric. And so this ruler is a three and a half inch. And so we're gonna go the three and then I'll do the eight, which is one of the little marks and then just make sure that it's like right on the fabric on that eight. So let's see if we can show you that. So instead of putting it on the on the outside of the fabric, I'm just going to put it basically right on that fabric. Okay. 
Let's see, I'm going to bring this over here. Maybe. So you can see that. So you can see how like that eighth inch line right there, and that one's hard to see because it's under that line, but it's just on right on top of that fabric. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and cut that. And then I just rotate my mat and I'm going to do the same thing, the three and an eight. Go ahead and cut it. Rotate three and an eight. And the last one, and you can see how this rotating mat just makes this super easy to rotate that and get it all turned around without messing up where my blocks are. So three and an eight. And now I have nine equal blocks. Okay. And this is where the fun of the disappearing pinwheel comes in because this is where you can do so many different things. And I think for the club, I think we turned all of these points in and turned these out. And so this was the club block that we did was just like this. And so it looks kind of like a stop sign. Okay. And so for the disappearing pinwheel, so it looks like this friendship block, we're going to change these two spots and we're going to make this. Put that one right there and then this will go here and then the next one here will go like this with this one going like that and then this one will go up here and this one will just slide up and then our next one will go like this and we bring that last one over and it goes down there so you can see just how much fun this disappearing pinwheel block is like you can make so so many different so many different options um they're fun to play with like you can make some that look like arrows you can make them that look just so many different ways and then you just piece it together like the two the two on the well the three on the top so you do your rows and then you do the three rows and sew them together so it is so easy it's it, but it is mind-blowing and the other thing that i love is this because as you're sewing these pieces together, Johnny, have you ever used one of these? No. Okay, I love this um, when you're doing chain piecing. Uh -huh. Because as you have those together, you're able to just take it and you'll have like the two that are chained like this and you just go and they just come apart. And it's so amazing. Mm -hmm. It is great. You want to see Johnny? Look, here's Barb peeking in on us. Oh, I haven't oh, seen Barb for so long. Hi, Barb. How are you? <laughs> hey, Johnny. Come up and play, would you? I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Johnny. I'll be here tomorrow. <laughs> what? I didn't realize it was your class or I would not have made other plans. Because I'd be here for you, Johnny. Oh, I wish you'd be there. Your top is sure cute. Oh, well, thank you. Get Look how pretty your back. top is. Oh, that is my bandito, bandito. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see your block, Johnny. Hold it up. Uh, oh, oh, my hair. Don't you love his block? I love his because it's like you could make it look like different things. Yeah. Hold it up. We're, again. we're like, done with yes, we're like the idea ones. We have, you can't just do one block with us, but we give you options. <laughs> well, I think people are super sad they're not seeing a, um, people are really sad they're not seeing a log cabin from me, I think. Yeah. That is my favorite, that. Block, but I've kind of, you know okay do you need right. to go yep we're gonna go jump into our event okay um, i might be back right at the end all right uh, so we'll just kind of keep me quiet here and um you'll get to show your i'm gonna hide you there. okay right, so here and there yeah. <laughs> right. i'm just looking at you okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. i hit her i hope that's okay hey where's ann beale Okay, Ann Beal is here somewhere. You guys, there's so much going on here. 
So we're moving things around in the back. We're going to have a classroom again. If you're in the area, we're going to start doing an open sew. You may have seen that on Facebook. We're going to do open sew every Friday. Wait, sorry. What is it? First Friday and Saturday of the month, right, Suzanne? So it's going to be the first Friday and Saturday of the month. Basically open sew all day. We'll have our classroom set up. You can bring a treat to share if you'd like. We would love to see you. Um, I need a, uh, is there a, a seam ripper anywhere nearby? That you can, poor Suzanne. You guys like, I'm always reaching out for somebody to help me. There's Suzanne coming in. So since I have talked so much about the log cabin block and People have asked me about my log cabin quilt block project for the warehouse. I need some more blocks. I just counted and we could use a little bit more. So if you want to know more about that, we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll just post about it in the club. Uh, I really wanted to show a couple of these um, comments about uh, Sherry's block, Kenzie mind blown right roxana said look complicated but so easy now that i see it um deanna you made that look so easy yep tammy says mind blown for sure um i love to join on that quilt so please do post more info i will do that <laughs> Both of your blocks are awesome, but no log cabin. I want to do a traditional, oh man, I should have done a log cabin. Dang it. Okay, we're gonna do string piecing. So this is, found. I call it string piecing or foundation piecing. Uh, and I'm gonna show you two different ways how I like to do it. Um, I like, how's see. This is kind of how we got started. This is just a piece of muslin. I really like sewing on fabric and I'll tell you why, because I don't have to tear paper out later. You may have guessed this, but I'm kind of a lazy quilter. Uh, I just want things to be fast. I want to be get done. I like to generate the ideas, but after that, I'm kind of like, let's move on to the next project. Right? So, uh, Oh, Anne Marie says, Make us a bonus log cabin block that we can use for a label on the back. I love that idea. Coming at you. I'll do that. The other way to do it is to, to piece onto paper. So this is foundation paper. Um, this is Carol Doak's foundation paper. Super thin. It's kind of almost like newsprint. Remember those old rolls of newsprint? Did everyone do that? Like there was this printing company in Bountiful where I grew up and you could go to the publisher and buy these newsprint rolls and we use them for everything um crafts and stuff so i'm going to show you how i get started and i like to do things we're doing i think uh this is for an eight and a half inch block so i cut these little squares at four and a half inches and this paper i just folded in half my fabric that i'm sewing on i just folded in half now you can do glue i've done it before where i've glued it to the center um but this one i just i press this i fold this one half so i'd have the half on that one and then the the fabric for this one i just did a um a seam roller it's called so this is from violet craft it's called the violet craft seam roller i just asked chris to add this to the website so i don't know if it's up there yet but <laughs> Jennifer Jen, Jennifer says it's called efficiency. That's right. Efficiency, not laziness. Efficiency. Thank you. So I have basically finger pressed both of these. And oh, okay, hold one second. We're going to come back to how. I'm going to show you the why first. Okay. So, like they were saying, um, it's very versatile. So, this is one version. On the pattern, I did like four different layouts, but I'm just going to pick unpick this right now i'm not going to do the seam ripper version i mean the seam ripper uh style that chris talked about although i just totally ripped the seam anyway dang it that's all right um 
Bear with me for one second. So I like this one because you can do so many different things with it. And it's a nice way to use up scraps. I, I really love to piece with strips. And so like, maybe you saw the picture in the club of my sewing room. Oh my gosh, it's a mess. But I just will take all of my fabrics that I've pulled that I'm working with and I'll just cut them into strips. And I use that stripology ruler that we've shown you before. And I'll do like just a varying, I don't know, I just like to mix it up. So I'll do some at one and a half inches, some at two, some at two and a half. Not usually bigger than that because I do like that st uh, scrappy, strippy look. Um, okay, I'm just ripping these apart. One second. I used to do that version where you just tear, like rip, literally rip, but I have made some mistakes. I have ripped a quilt before too, so. Um, oh, sorry. I'm just, I have these four patches that I'm unpicking. So just one second, Judy, I apologize. So this one is the one I put together. Well, I can show you with this one. Okay, so this is, this is one block. So this is one little block that we're making. Now this is like four and a half inches, which I normally wouldn't do that big. So this is like one block though. And what's fun is you can do something like this. You can put them together like that. You can put them together like in a, well, I'll just show you what I've made with them. So these are the pillows that sit on my front porch. They used to be super bright. Now they're all sun bleached, which I actually kind of like. Like, I think it looks summery and um, Suzanne says she loves it. Thank you. So I have these like Adirondack chairs on my front porch and these just sit out there all summer and get all sun bleached and stuff. Then, but you can tell I just did, I like to do one color in the middle. So I did this white and then everything else is kind of just an appendage to it. So you can see that one block, there's white in the center. And then I just kind of chose some scrappy colors. And again, this has been bleached by the sun. So these used to be really bright, you know, like, um, you know, more bright colors. Anyway, that's that one. And then this is this, I did this one last year. So just to show you the idea of the colors, I wanted that, um, I did, I did that center. I did them all in grays, but I did different shades of gray. So you can't really, it doesn't really stand out as much as that other version. But then let's see. So this is like, so you see how you can do like kind of a herringbone or a square. That one I did like that square, I made it into kind of a diamond, but then herringbone the rest of the way, if that makes sense. Anyway, I love these colors like blues and grays, uh, nautical theme. And I just love those fabrics. Uh, I just, yeah. And it's just a way to show off to like fabrics. Like if there's like prints that you like, someone said very masculine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Janet Clare. So if anyone knows Janet Clare, Janet Clare is from England and she's just the sweetest, sweet person. She's the nicest, nice. She does, um, she designs for Moda. And when she was like, like, I guess we'd call like auditioning to do designs for Moda. She just sent her, she sent her sketchbook basically. <laughs> she just sent like paintings and she does everything by paint. She'll just paint and anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous quilt fabrics. So back to our block. So you just have, you basically start with one like this and uh, then you can combine it in any of those different ways, right? And I like some of you, you'll see the picture um, on the pattern. If you want to get the pattern, we'll have the pattern up. And if you'll see like, these are kind of like mostly even, but some are not. And I, but I'll purposely do things. If you do things on purpose more than once, then it's a design choice, right? So you don't have to, um, Janet says, I'll send you a photo of a quilt I'm binding right now that has the same, oh, I love it. Yeah, send me a picture. But if you make the same mistake more than one time, then it's a design choice, right? 
So, you guys, Cindy, come say hi really quick. So, Cindy is our... Cindy's our um, new manager here in Sandy in the, on the floor. And Cindy, say hi. Hi, guys. Now, show, show them your t-shirt. Oh, yes. I'm sunshine mixed with a little hurricane. I am. And it's, if anything would describe Cindy better, it's I'm running around that here like a Tasmanian shirt. devil. She is very Tasmanian devil-esque. Um, sorry, she's just walking by with a ladder of all things. I'm like, what are you doing? Okay, so if you make things that like, if you make the same mistake twice, then it's a design choice, right? So sometimes I don't give all, I don't get that perfectly even on there. So it's a little off kilter. But if you do it like all over, if you purposely don't line things up, more than one time, then it's a design choice. Chris was talking about the other day on, on three at three. She's like, well, sometimes I want to crop off the point of my triangle or whatever. Yeah. Just do it more than once and then it's fine. Um, everyone's saying hi, Cindy to, you now. okay. So I'm going to show you how I work on this block. So I'll cut like, I don't know, a hundred of these for the quilt that I'm working on. I don't know how many quilt squares were in that. So I'll cut um, either squares of, that you can do paper or fabric. This is just muslin. And I'll just cut like a hundred. And then I will just press them in half. So like this one, I just pressed in half. And then when I'm doing that center square, like on this one, I just pressed it. I just finger pressed it. I use that, um, that Violet Craft tool super easy just to press it uh let's see i can't really show you but yeah just press it pull it in half and then just run this this is just a presser right maybe i'll have to have someone help me with the camera in a second but then i will line those up this one is going to be right sides to get up because it's my center you can also glue too but i don't know i just don't yeah I have seen people use just a spot of glue on there. So if you were wanting to do something super exact and you wanted to make sure every one was perfect, I would just put a little dab of like white glue on the corners. So you can see there, that's how it kind of would look. And then conversely, if I show you from the back, I think you can see that pretty well. So See how the, this, those line up there? So then I'm going to, oh man. I'm just going to stitch down one side of that, on, on that onto that paper. So I've got my handy dandy HD9 here. This is the machine I have at home. And again, if you don't have if you haven't thought of a straight stitch, if you piece a lot and you haven't tried a straight, a straight stitch machine out, man, I love it. <clears throat> I love my machine so much. Uh, and I'm just going to do a, kind of like, I guess you'd call it a stay stitch, but I'm, not, I'm going like right on the edge of this one. And then I have it like that. Oops, sorry. So I like that. And then I'll just trim this piece off. So that's like where you're, that's going to be your starting one. Then I have my fabric. I didn't get that cut beforehand. I apologize. And I, on the pattern that we have, I did do a, an inch and a quarter. Oh yeah. I cut these at these strips at an inch and a quarter so that if you had strips from a jelly roll that you could cut them in half. So half to two and a half inch and a quarter. Right. So that's why I did that. Um, that was my method for that madness, I guess. Uh, And what's nice about this too is if like you're, you know, if you're using scraps, it's very forgiving. Oh, sheesh.
So I have my neck stripped there. And then, oh, I did, yeah, I did pink on that one. So then I just take, uh, so I'll get to that in one second, Robin, okay? So then the next one, I can just lay this down like that and right sides together onto my paper. And then I am just gonna do a quarter inch. And this is like, this is why I really like uh, this machine because I can just like throw it on there and stitch out so fast. So then I added, oh, and I didn't, I don't know what happened there. Oops. I'm just going to sew that again really quick, quick, sorry. Didn't catch there for some reason. Okay. So then I just added that one down there. The next one, I fold it open. Like so. And if I didn't want to press in between each one, that's why I have my little roller. I just take it and I just can finger press or press that open. And I can just go to the next one too. So, sorry, you can't see that. Let's see if I can show that. Oh, there we go. So I just lay that out like that. Just roll that, press that open. And then I can do the next one. So here's my here's my cloth version. So the question was from Robin, why do you sew on the paper or fabric? So it's a foundation. The after you cut these, so you you're gonna cut, you're gonna sew this whole thing, and then when you have it done, you can just turn it over and trim, but then you're going to have all these bias edges. So when you trim, all those edges are going to be on the bias. So you have to have the, the foundation, then you can, um, you'll be able to keep those more intact. Does that make sense? So you're not stretching as you go. And that is one thing that, you know, like, I'm really good at easing. Like I can, when I'm, when I'm piecing something, I like to just ease as much as possible. But if I don't, if I didn't have that foundation, that would stretch all over the place with those bias edges. So that is why the foundation, uh, someone said special paper. Jen says joining late. It's a special paper, right? Yeah. So this is called Carol Dokes foundation paper. We do have that on, the website today we also have this in the store um and or you can just use muslin i i just buy like the cheapest muslin i can find or scraps but i like to have it and people always wonder about um is it going to give extra bulk or something like that so that doesn't really give um like you can't feel it in there and on this one like yeah, you can't, you can't, it just adds another layer and your machine will quilt through it just fine. All right. So any other questions? Uh, oh, I love paper piece blocks. The first quilt I made was paper piece and it was a huge learning curve. I still, well, I did that one leaf last year. I haven't, I haven't, did, I haven't done more. I just, I've done these more. Uh, sorry. Amber says, that's so awesome. Don't have to worry about going to the ironing board. Nope, exactly. Those, that, I, that, uh, seam roller is nice. Jen says, thanks. If you go with muslin, do you have to worry about shrinking? I don't know. I haven't ever worried about it. Uh, I don't think so. And even if you did, 
I think you just give your quilt a little extra crinkle, right? Everyone loves the crinkle their quilt gets when they wash it. Does anybody not wash their quilts? Um, am, I the, am I the weirdest person because I don't want to wash my quilts? I just love that. I love the new, like, flat-looking version. Um, but I don't know. This one needs to be washed. It's been hanging on my wall in my bedroom forever, and it needs to be washed. Uh, I do not pre-wash my fabric, so how do these wash up? I don't know. I guess I'll wash mine now and see how it turns out. I'll show you when I wash it. It's due for a wash. Um, Linda says she doesn't wash her quilts. Good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh, Elisa says, oh, sorry. The one I made wasn't that big, but I did it on muslin with all kinds of stuff for my stash. It turned out really fun. Yeah, thank you. I I really like the way they turn out. This, I, I think that's probably my second favorite block because it's just so versatile. Like you can, um, yeah, you can just do so many different things. So I made one, my, my best friend growing up, my goal is to, um, my goal is to make a quilt for the most important people in my life or the people who I consider my important people, if that makes sense. So I'm trying to make a quilt for everyone. And my best friend growing up, his name's Adam and him and his husband live in Denver. And he sent me a, Oh, I posted, I made, I made, um, I made pillows like this first and this same fabrics. So I did pillows and I posted them online. He says, I love that. And I'm like, really? So then I made, I made them a pillows that for them. And then I decided, oh, is their wedding anniversary? And then I thought I'd make them a wedding quilt. So I made that basically that same quilt over again, but I did the center portion, like this, this, uh, let's see. So like this center strip, this center strip. See on this one I did like blues and then a gray and then a darker gray and then a darker gray. On that, there's I did all the same color, um, just a gray. So it made it, made it more unified, but I did it more, I put in a lot of black and whites and yeah. I just made it more fun. Um, Annalise also says you can do it with random widths of strips too. That's what, yeah, great stash butter, stash butter. That's why I like it too. So I can do like every, every width possible, but I do kind of like the, I like this more uniform version. I think it turned out really cute. Yeah. Bobby says, my strings were all different widths, made it very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. I th That's what I like is I think different widths gives it a visual interest and um, makes it eye-catching, pleasing to look at, if you will. Um, oh, sorry. Someone, someone mentioned this earlier. Do you leave the paper in? No. So after you're done, if you're doing the paper, then you want to go back and you have to rip the paper out. So it's not hard, but it just takes time to, you want to pull the paper out. Um, if you're doing the paper version, the fabric, just leave it on there and just quilt it in, but the paper definitely pull the paper out. So yeah, paper out. Uh, Janine says, I love the fabric that you use. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. I think that's all we have today. I don't, I, Oh, Wait a second. Hold on a second. Who's this? Hold on. Hold on. There we go. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on one second. Heidi says, nope. Uh, Heidi says, use a smaller stip stitch if using paper. Yes. So if you're doing paper, Pull that, make the stitch a little bit smaller and it'll be easier to, to tear out. I always forget when I was doing my little leaf pillow last year, I totally forgot. And yes, it was a pain to pull out. So, Hold on. Sherry. Hello. How are you? I'm great. I already showed my, my, my madness. I, well, I think your block is fantastic. I heard just a little bit as I was coming around. I think it's great. 
Thank you. I like that it kind of, one of them kind of looks like an X and one of them kind of looks like an O. So you could do that as a, you could you know, like an O for. Oh for my God. Okay. You, you can know that? It's like the well, ruler. I, thing. It's like the ruler. <laughs> thing. What? <laughs> well, we were just talking about um, Valentine quilts earlier. Someone was in buying more Valentine fabric. We have such cute Valentine fabric. Oh my gosh. There is. Oh, speaking of Valentine quilts. Speaking of, do you know of any cute ones? There's a class tomorrow. Um, uh, so our class tomorrow. Do you have anything to say about it? You're teaching it. I'm teaching a class it's tomorrow. Johnny's first girlfriend class. I'm so excited. He is. And I'm going to come up with them. I'm going to be We're his. We're going to ride together. Yep. We're going to brainstorm on all kinds yep. of fun We're things. Gonna the way. Come up with some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> We're good at that. Um, What was I saying? Oh, I was just thinking of a Valentine quilt. It'd be so cute to do X's and O's. Like we're using that same pattern, right? You could. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> X. Hey, um, Patricia says, I love the blocks this week. I missed Tuesday though. Hey, Sherry, how could she find that? Well, if you are a member of the club, they are all in their own section and you can still download, go, download them for free. If you're not, they still are on the website. And so you'll be able to find them. Um, I'm trying to remember who Tuesday was. We had, it was, it was Allison pretending oh, Allison. to be Cindy. Yeah. And yeah. it was. Who else was with her? Allison, who was with you on Tuesday? Debbie. Debbie's block. Oh, yeah. The churn dash. I almost did the churn dash, I'll be honest. Because I like the way they look. Yeah, they look. 